Good morning, Little Masters, and welcome back to today's Tolkien Times. I'm the Man of the West, also from the Prancing Pony podcast. Let's get started with week 46's Word Nerd Wednesday. Now, over the last two weeks, we've been looking at words from our readings in Aldarian and Arendus, and lots of them, including Flora, like Oyalaire, Eleanor, Lisuin, as well as a couple of Aldarian ships, Pelaren and Hirolonde. Now, today, as we near the end of our Third Age Thursday readings in a long-expected party, we're going to return to the Lord of the Rings to take a look at some interesting words. Last week, we read about the presents that Bilbo gave away, and how cluttered his home was as a result of the custom of giving birthday presents. Not, of course, that the birthday presents were always new. There were one or two old mathems of forgotten uses that had circulated all around the district, but Bilbo had usually given new presents and kept those that he received. So good of him, not regifting really, but it's the word Matham that's definitely worth looking at here, and that's where we're going to spend most, if not all, of this Word Nerd Wednesday. Now, we know what it means, of course, not just from context, but from the prologue itself. Still, I'm going to go ahead and refresh your memory. After talking about the Battle of Greenfields in the prologue, we read this. So though there was still some store of weapons in the Shire, these were used mostly as trophies, hanging above hearths or on walls, or gathered into the museum at Mitchell Delving. The Matham House, it was called, for anything that hobbits had no immediate use for, but were unwilling to throw away, they called a Matham. Their dwellings were apt to become rather crowded with Mathams, and many of the presents that passed from hand to hand were of that sort. All right, then. So something they didn't have a use for. So a wheelbarrow or a fine waistcoat wouldn't be a Matham. But something that had just enough perceived value that they were unwilling to throw it away would be. And a Matham house is a museum-like place where these could be stored and displayed, like when Bilbo loaned the mithril coat to the Mitchell Delving Matham House. Now, we get another mention of a Matham in the prologue that actually is what leads us into the philological portion of today's episode. There's a paragraph where we learn about Mary writing her blore of the Shire and his reckoning of the years, but it's the last sentence of the paragraph that gets us started. He also wrote a short treatise on old words and names in the Shire, showing special interest in discovering the kinship with the language of the Rohirrim of such Shire words as Matham and old elements in place names. Okay, so now we know that there's a kinship between the Shire word Matham and the language of the Rohirrim. Well, what do we know about Rohirric? It's Old English, right? Well, let's go to Appendix F, Part 2 on translation for more. There, Tolkien explains that the common speech, as the language of the hobbits and their narratives, has inevitably been turned into modern English. Otherwise, we'd all have had a hard time reading the story. Then he explains why he'd translated those common speech or Westron names by sense. He says, It seemed to me that to present all the names in their original forms would obscure an essential feature of the times as perceived by the hobbits, whose point of view I was mainly concerned to preserve. The contrast between a widespread language, to them as ordinary and habitual as English is to us, and the living remains of far older and more reverend tongues. Speaking of far older and more reverend tongues, let's move forward in Appendix F. The Manish languages that were related to the Westron should, it seemed to me, be turned into forms related to English. The language of Rohan I have accordingly made to resemble ancient English, since it was related both more distantly to the common speech and, very closely, to the former tongue of the northern hobbits, and was, in comparison with the Westron, archaic. In the Red Book, it is noted in several places that when hobbits heard the speech of Rohan, they recognized many words and felt the language to be akin to their own, so that it seemed absurd to leave the recorded names and words of the Rohirrim in a wholly alien style. And then we get to the gem for today. This assimilation, Tolkien writes, also provided a convenient way of representing the peculiar local hobbit words that were of northern origin. Okay, so now we have our link to the prologue and that bit about the kinship with the language of the Rohirrim of such Shire words as Matham. Tolkien explains that those Shire words have been given the forms that lost English words might well have had if they had come down to our day. Thus, Matham is meant to recall ancient English Matham, and so to represent the relationship of the actual hobbit Kast to Rohirric Kastu. 
So the relationship between a Rohiric word, kastu, and the Hobbit word, kast, is instead reflected in a relationship between the Old English word, mathem, and the English translation of cast as mathem. Now, looking up Motham on my favorite Old English website, Bosworth Toller's Anglo-Saxon Dictionary Online, and don't we all have a favorite Old English website? Motham is a noun meaning a precious or valuable thing, often refers to gifts, a treasure, jewel, ornament. And in fact, in Beowulf alone, Bosworth Toller point out three different references. One time, it's referring to a sword, another time to a rich present, and finally, to a jewel. Now, as Hammond and Skull point out in their Reader's Companion, thus, Tolkien uses Matham ironically for things which are not treasured, only for which there was no immediate use or which the hobbits were unwilling to throw away. Again, the depths to which Tolkien went to create this inner consistency of reality is why his work still and will always be the standard. Folks, that is it for today's Word Nerd Wednesday. Come back next week as we wander the wide, wild, wonderful world of words weekly on Wednesdays. And if there's a word you want to know more about, please let me know by emailing Barnum at the prancingponypodcast.com. Please visit patreon.com slash Tolkien Times to learn how you can support the show, get an ad-free feed, a monthly hangout with me, bonus weekly episode, and a lot more. And join me again tomorrow on today's Tolkien Times for Third Age Thursday. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Please follow or subscribe in your podcast apps and follow at Tolkien Times on all your social media. And finally, as Faramir says, go with the goodwill of all good men.